NASCAR and the teams can't agree on revenue, and Carl Edwards makes a surprising appearance at Daytona. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Hope your week is going well. Hope you're staying warm out there, especially if you're like me and you live in the South, not equipped for this cold weather. My uh, Garfield pajama pants here have been <laughs> coming in clutch this winter. <laughs> Sorry, I just really wanted an excuse to show off my unmatched style. Lots of NASCAR news to catch up on from this past weekend. Let's begin with the ARCA Daytona test. William Sawalich paced the field in day two, but all I were on Shane Van Gisbergen making his first super speedway laps ever. First time at Daytona, the Daytona Beach News Journal included some interesting quotes from SVG explaining what stood out to him the most this weekend. SVG said, quote, mainly just the G's. I hadn't really felt that in the corner. The way the corner is pushing against you and you just sink into the seat, there's a fair bit of pressure there. It was just cool to be out there. The simulator can only do so much for you. Around cars, it was kind of what I expected. You can't see much when you're right behind them, so you try to take a peek and look out, but that slows you down when you get out of line. Just the little things I've been told about, but you don't really know until you get out there and feel it for yourself. I joked about this a couple weeks ago, but welcome to America, Shane. <laughs> On February 17th, he will pull double duty at Daytona. First the ARCA race, then the Xfinity Series race. Get ready to learn pack racing, buddy. <laughs> I'm very excited to see SVG race this year. Something about his enthusiasm is infectious. He wants to be here in America, racing stock cars. He's an established supercar superstar. I respect that he's trying to step outside of his comfort zone, try something a bit different. He's already obviously had some success. But 2024, between 33 Xfinity races, another half a dozen or so cup races, some ARCA, maybe some trucks, this year is going to be a beast. Can't wait to see what SVG can do this year. Speaking of Daytona, speed weeks are right around the corner. The Rolex 24 is, what, I think less than two weeks away? Frank Kelleher, Daytona International Speedway track president, caught a lot of folks' attention today when he posted this photo of him standing next to the one and only Carl Edwards. You never know who you're gonna run into during a Speed Week's track prep walkthrough. Great to see you, Carl Edwards. He's looking good, healthy, race ready as ever. I'm sorry, I can't help myself. But hey, we noticed this last year, the Carl Edwards NASCAR appearances are becoming way more frequent. There was a few years there where Carl Edwards effectively dropped off the face of the earth from a racing perspective. The past couple seasons between the Darlington appearance, this Daytona appearance, he's done some serious XM interviews. Carl Edwards is as close to the sport as he's been since he you know, shockingly retired at the start of 2017. Not saying anything specific, I'm just pointing out that obvious fact. But, you know, okay, let's have some fun. What's Carl Edwards doing at Daytona this time of year? Let's just play a fun, hypothetical game. Right now, there are three open entries confirmed for this year's Daytona 500. We know that Anthony Alfredo will drive the Beard 62. BJ McLeod has said he'll attempt to qualify the Live Fast 78. Roush Fenway Keselowski is bringing the 60 car with David Reagan. But there are a few other cars that very well could show up to the 500 this year. Jimmy Johnson is rumored to drive the Legacy 84. Last year, Colleg, Front Row, and 2311 brought a third car to this race. They haven't announced anything yet. Just something to keep your eye on. I don't think Carl Edwards will race in NASCAR ever again, but he keeps showing up to these events. Or in the case of today at Daytona, I don't think there is any event going on. Maybe I'm missing something, but why is he there? Why would he be there? This is the closest Carl Edwards has been to NASCAR since he retired seven years ago. Just gonna leave it at that. On a serious note, it's always good to see Carl Edwards. He does look good there. Always nice to see him near a racetrack. All right, now it's time for everyone's favorite recurring out of the groove segment. It's the part where I judge a musical artist's relevancy. I know, I am a self-proclaimed expert on this topic. Machine Gun Kelly will perform at this year's Clash at the Coliseum event. He'll be the midway uh, performer. He'll fill the slot Wiz Khalifa filled last season. I can't say I've kept up with Machine Gun Kelly in recent years. I would not call myself an MGK fan, but I would argue that he is relevant. 
He does at least tick that box. 13 million monthly Spotify listeners. He's got fans, particularly younger fans. Sure, he's he's kind of a meme, somewhat of a punching bag on the internet. He's he's kind of like Nickelback in that it, you'll have a hard time finding someone who will admit they're a fan. He can be controversial for sure. I feel like these days he's best known for, for dating Megan Fox. That's something, I guess. Again, not for everyone, but to me... The point of bringing musical artists to NASCAR races is to, one, provide additional entertainment that largely resonates with your demographic, and two, is to find someone who is relevant and will help you sell more tickets. You ideally want someone who can do both. Like, for example, Tim Duggar, yeah, I think country music resonates with much of NASCAR's core audience. He's not selling you extra tickets. He's not a big name. Machine Gun Kelly does not resonate with your traditional core South-Southeast NASCAR fan, but I would say he's relevant. His name is in the headlines regularly, for better or for worse. He doesn't fit both categories, though, which is why I cannot say this is a a great choice by NASCAR. I can't say it's terrible either. The clash at the Coliseum, how many more times do we have to go over this? It's meant to be an experiment. It's supposed to be different. We can argue if it's too different, but this MGK signing is in line with previous musical acts. We've gone from Pitbull to Wiz Khalifa to Cypress Hill. None of these artists are expected to appeal to the traditional NASCAR fan, but that's the point. There are 37 other races a year. We know we have Tim Duggar performing 10 of them. You'll get your country music fixed. Don't you worry. I appreciate NASCAR taking risks with this event. That's what this event is supposed to be. It is an outlier. Is Machine Gun Kelly the perfect pick? No, probably not. But he has, it's worth mentioning this, he has performed at NASCAR events before. I believe he did the 2017 or 2018 All-Star Race. So it's not like he's completely new to NASCAR. I don't know. I'm at least curious to see what his performance next month looks like. (sighs) All right, let's move on. I hate talking about musical acts on this show. I'm so far out of my element, it's not even funny. Let's get back to racing. Now let's talk about the business of racing because things are getting serious. Adam Stern, Sports Business Journal, broke some big news early in the weekend. NASCAR and its teams have agreed to extend their charter renewal negotiations window after the prior one lapsed at the end of December. NASCAR is offering teams 42% of media revenue in a proposed new deal, which would be up from the current 39%. Wait, 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 wait. Let's slow down. For years now, It has been reported that the current media revenue split goes something like 65% of the money goes to the tracks, 25% goes to the teams, and then 10% goes to NASCAR. 25% to the teams. That's what we've been led to believe. This latest report from Sports Business Journal suggests that number is actually closer to 39% when you factor in the purse money that the tracks pay them. Okay, that is new public information that kind of changes everything. Oh, but wait, it gets even more confusing. According to Adam Stern, there's been two different ways of counting NASCAR's money presented during charter talks with the teams. The first has NASCAR's new offer at 42% of media revenue, up from the current 35%. The second has NASCAR's new offer at 49%, up from 39%. So there's two different ways of interpreting the same money? How is that possible? I'm probably naive, but it sounds to me like NASCAR and the teams are still fairly far apart. I'm glad that they've decided to extend their charter negotiation window. I mean, that was just necessary. That's more of a given than anything. But now that the season is around the corner, I worry about how long these negotiations will continue. Are they going to continue well into the season? They got to get a deal done before the end of this year. Like if they don't, uh, NASCAR is headed for a split. There will be major ramifications if they don't sign something in 2024. I'm trying to break this down so I can understand it better. Right now, under the current media deal, the race teams get anywhere from 35 to 39 percent of that TV money. They're asking for close to 50 percent of the new deal, which will go into effect in 2025. NASCAR is currently offering them something in the 40s, so a modest increase, but not necessarily everything NASCAR teams are asking for. You also have to keep in mind, we're talking about percentages here, the pie is getting substantially larger in 2025. Right now, TV networks are paying about $820 million a year. Starting next year, that number will be 1.1 billion, nearly a 40% increase. So you have to keep that in mind. While the team's chunk of the pie may only go up a few percent, they're actually looking at a 40 plus percent increase themselves when you factor in 
you know, the fact that the pie itself is much larger. I need a whiteboard. I need to start drawing some pictures here. Yeah, this report was very interesting in some ways, but equally as confusing in others. I'm trying my best to be as objective, as fair as possible, but it's hard when we really don't know exactly what's going on behind closed doors. I guess what's most concerning from this report is that if the two sides are disagreeing on numbers or even disagreeing on what the numbers mean, we could be looking at these negotiations carrying on for many more months. And the longer it goes, the more stressful things become. Adam Stern had reported previously that the teams are seriously considering you know, protesting or staging some sort of demonstration during race weekends this year to show their displeasure with NASCAR. That sounds ugly. I hope things don't come to that, but listening to this latest report and the confusion and you know, conflicting data, it sounds like both sides are still far apart. And that is, there's no other way to say it, that is concerning. But it's hard for me to have a strong opinion. I don't know if the teams deserve 50-50. This isn't like other sports leagues. You know, NASCAR has tracks that aren't owned by teams or the city like you see often in other sports. So you have to factor them into NASCAR's media deal differently than you may factor stadiums into other sports media deals. So I don't know whose side to be on. I just know as a NASCAR fan, I want this sport to be healthy for many years to come. I want the teams to feel confident. I want NASCAR to feel confident. I want everyone to be happy with where the media deal and negotiations currently are. And I'm not sure that's the case reading this report. Hate to end it on an ambiguous note like that, but uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. We covered a lot of topics in this one. Carl Edwards showing up to Daytona. What could that mean, if anything? SVG's first ARCA test. Will you be rocking out to uh, Machine Gun Kelly at the Clash next month? Let me know down in the comment section below. That will do it for this episode, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new. We talk NASCAR every single day, every single week. And a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters as well. I'll catch you in the next episode, folks. Stay warm out there and have a good one.